Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I decided to start a new series regarding Spring and regarding Spring Boot and RESTful APIs. So before getting into that, I just want to tell you a little bit about Java and Spring and my background as well. So I have been a software developer for quite a few years now and most of my work has dealt with building REST APIs using Spring Boot only. So this is what we're going to start with. I will slowly, I'll expand upon this. I'll keep expanding upon this project and I'll include, uh, keep uh, including new things. But for now, we are starting with the most simplest and most basic example of a Spring Boot application, where we will do just some CRUD, app, uh, CRUD operations on a simple MySQL database. Now, before getting into that, Let's talk a little about Spring and what it is. So Spring is basically a framework that is built on Java and it is one of the most uh, popular Java frameworks and in fact, one of the most popular frameworks in the world right now. And it provides basically, it provides infrastructure support for developing Java applications. So what it does is the Spring itself, it boots up the application and it provides whatever the Tomcat server then it might require while you and while you focus on the business logic. Okay, so Spring by doing this, instead of focusing on 10 different things to get, you have to do, so you have to bring this server up, that server up, instead of doing that, those 10 things, what you can do is you can focus on the business logic of your application and then just build your application. So it makes programming qu quicker, easier, and quite safe as well. It focuses on speed and simplicity and productivity uh, and productivity. Okay. Now going to Spring Boot. Spring Boot. Yeah. One more thing actually about Spring. So I have the, all these docs opened up over here. So I'll link these docs, all these docs in the description. So anybody who wants the more information can go through that and look through them. Okay, now all these, uh, so Spring. So basically Spring has a thing called annotations, which I'll show you in a later video, in the next video maybe, where it allows us to configure dependencies and in, it allows us to implement dependency injection through Java programs. Now what dependency injection is, it is basically just a design pattern that removes the dependency from the programming code so that it is easy to manage and test the application and it also makes the program loosely coupled. So what loosely coupled means is uh, in, in case of a tightly coupled application, if you make any sort of changes, you have to do everywhere uh, those changes. But in case of a loosely coupled, you can make those changes and it, it either like if you are using like annotations like auto white, they'll take care of it by itself or like uh, it, you, it is not actually required to do so. So that is what the dependency injection. So yeah, I'll link these things as well. So like I have this doc open over here, like you can read in more depth. So I'll link all these things. Now getting into the, uh, so I said like oh, API is and all now. So API is basically an application programming interface. To put it simply, it is just a service to communicate with other products and services. So basically you send a call to a different service so you basically send a call, it will do some sort of backend, it will do some sort of, it can get uh, things from other services as well, or it ha might have a database that can use to uh, get the things, to get the data and send it back to you. You don't need to know a lot about how it is being done, just that you send, for example, if you send school, let's say, for example, if you have some sort of ID, you send ID, as a, if in case of Amazon, let's say, given Amazon ID is equal to five. So it will basically send the, all the product details of ID number five from the database. Now it is possible that it can use a different service to call an Amazon or it might have direct access to Amazon database like in case of its internal services. So they can do both of them. So we'll, uh, I'll teach you all these things in the upcoming videos. And so rest, uh, so yeah, so that is what API is. And REST is one of the most popular framework, uh, not frameworks actually. It is one of the most popular, uh, what is it, what do you call it? 
architecture cell for an API. So it stands for representational state transfer. And you can read about, again, like you can read a lot uh, about all these things. So uniform interface, client server, stateless, cacheable, layered system, code on demand, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one of the most uh, prominent architectural styles of API. The other one being SOAP and GraphQL, which are also quite popular. And then there's the Google Swan that is gRPC. So that is also gaining some traction today. It actually has been gaining traction for quite a while now, but yeah. But these are currently in the market, like these are the three main ones. So SOAP, REST, and GraphQL. And even now, still REST has kind of a big lead over the rest. Uh, to put it simply for what we will need is basically um, REST has different kinds of verbs. So it, each verb has a different meaning. So get as it says, get is for, it fetches a record. Or post is creates a new record, put is for an update or replacement, and delete is the deletes the record. So these four are the main ones that we use usually. <clears throat> there are other little options and with batch. So yeah, but uh, mostly you just use these post, put, delete, and get. And then there's this uh, codes as well. So the uh, so in REST, so HTTP HTTP itself has different kinds of code. So these are the success and the failure codes that go with these things. So we'll get into the codes a little. Actually, let me just open it as well. HTTP status code. So basically, it's like informational responses 100 to 199, successful response 200 to 299. So 200 is okay, 201 is created, 202 is accepted, 203 is non authoritative information, 204 no content. So basically, you can uh, uh, relay some sort of information via these codes as well, as well as well, you can send back the body as well, body of the object. All right, so though that is basically what the verbs and the uh, these codes would mean. So basically, uh, to keep, keep it simple, anything that starts with two is usually a success code. I mean, it can be like no data present or anything else, but it is usually a success code. Four XX is a, uh, some sort, it's a failure kind of a code. Uh, I don't remember it exactly, but let me just see. Yeah, client error, sorry. It's a client error responses, and five XX are server response, server error. So if some sort of failure happens at a server level, so you return 5xx, which is the most common one being 500 internal server error. All right. Now, uh, moving on to the Spring Boot application, as we were saying. So yeah, so this is the Spring Initializer page. So here, basically, what you can do is you can uh, tell the details of what sort of uh, package you want. So here, Usually people go with either, so I'll go with Maven, Java, I want language as Java, I'll do Java 8, packaging as jar, and let's say artifact name. So group ID is something like the company, uh, to, uh, kind of a, like a company kind of a name. So you can put like com, like Microsoft or whatever you're working for, like in the professional world. Artifact is kind of the name. So let's say, let's say Java ring application. So this is basically the name of your application. All right. And here you can add some dependencies. So I'll add these dependencies uh, right now. And I'll explain them just in a minute. So yeah. So Spring application, a Spring Boot application, and you actually Spring as well. So basically, they have these things called dependencies, which you can find in the POM structure. So I'll explain the POM files and the whole structure application in the next video, maybe. So, but basically, what this does is this implements a bunch of methods and classes which you can use to make your code simpler. So you don't have to keep writing the things over and over again. Think of it like a package only, so like java.array package or something like that only. But it is being implemented through the dependencies. So and you just click on generate, it will create a it will create a zip file. And let me just put it on desktop. So it has been saved on desktop. 
and let me ex and I'll extract this application in the next okay yeah, before actually moving to that uh, setup so yes so what I you so what I what I will be using for the videos most of the time is will be a MySQL database so that database I've set up postman is a client to call the rest APIs I'll actually just APIs you can call anything from here we'll get into that once we get into the testing the dev testing of the APIs IntelliJ is the code uh, code browser that I'll be using I mean code editor that I'll be using you can use Eclipse or whatever you want like it's like these softwares are completely up to you like these don't really impact the process but yeah like the keys the shortcuts might change or the layout might change so you will have to adjust accordingly so I use IntelliJ since like I have been using IntelliJ for like the last now five years five to six years now then to access the database I'll be using a Heidi SQL client yeah for installation so IntelliJ has a simple community version that you can install it's free of cost and if you want to pay that you can pay for the enterprise and other like the professional version that's like up to you but for the start we can start with the community version only Heidi SQL is a free way to download it you it usually it supports a lot of a huge amount of databases so that's why I like it very much then postman postman is also a free to download application you can just download it and install it MySQL is also a free to download application just one thing to remember that once you download it uh, go for a full install it will ask you like what sort of installation you want then let me actually see if I have it Downloads. okay let me pull this up okay it's actually not giving me the options like when, when you get, go for the fresh install but like once you go for a fresh install it will show you a bunch of options like custom mysql developer only and things like that but uh, i would suggest you to go for a full install it takes like maybe like 400 500 megabytes it's not that big of a program so like it's not that big of a deal so you can download uh, so you can install this and uh, if you face any sort of issues you can look up on web uh, for these issues because like these are quite common softwares and like there's a huge amount of developer support available online so you can look up on those and go ahead with the installation if you still face any issues put them in the comments section and I will try to help out as much as I can and I'll see you in next video when I'll start with the structure of the the basic structure of this project that we just downloaded from the spring initializer okay see you in the next video